Uh, this is Amp Sir Easy. Uh, active, dominant, and uh, a poly lifestyle kind of relationship kind of thing and some old stuff. Uh, basically an adult pretty much uh, living this life. Uh, recording some of my, uh, how to say it, uh, um, episodes and thoughts and whatnot. Vlogging. I think that's what we call this. So, uh, I guess I'll YouTube this one as well. But, uh, um, relationships. I, I've been having this talk with a lot of people lately about uh, this relationship thing. Let me turn off this TV first. Okay, good. Um, I've been having this, uh, going around blogging and whatnot, and you find all these people out here talking about, uh, relationships, and, well, uh, um, you know, there's this current thing in the black community, uh, where a lot of black women are getting upset about just about everything because there's about 1,800,000 more, uh, women, black women than there are black men. Now, in the process of that, they said that 47, 40, 40, between 42 and 47 uh, percentage of the amount of uh, black women that have never been married will probably never be married, you know. Uh, first and foremost, uh, overall in the entire uh, world thief, uh, census, that's the word, census, um, in the world census, Um, they said that America has a record amount of uh, non-married or recently divorced people in the entire history of its uh, its forming, its formation, and even probably even more uh, spectacular is that the rest of the world is not in that same kind of format. Um, we just happen to have a very high percentage right now of people who you know, are are happily single or whatnot. In a lot of cases, one of these issues with happily single is always trying to uh, give advice or state their opinion as to why their, you know, relationships are so hard. Well, you know, you can't find people to commit and this, that, and the other. And, well, I was watching um this uh this, this little show called Living Single, and I... It came to this episode where uh, Khadijah was supposed to get married to, uh, what's his name, or the, the little childhood friend dude, and they talked themselves out of it in the, in the, in the, in the jewelry store, even though, you know, uh, um, $8,000 investment was really uh, up for grabs. Now, um, Khadijah finally went on to... Now her man was like a tour guy. He was out on tour a lot, all the time, and traveling the world and whatnot. In the meantime, Khadijah, somewhere in this thing, because it hadn't quite got set up to that level yet. Khadijah had then become uh, um, an editor-in-chief and whatnot of this new f magazine. All these things went later on, and all these girls that were in this uh, series for all the years that we watched this series run on were all... Girlfriends and tight, but they were also living single. Oh, in a 90s kind of world. But this is 2010, and I think we need to think, or at least, you know, start contemplating. Maybe uh, you should listen to some men sometimes, you know, and, and just realize that, well, you can't have one unless you can understand the way we talk. Now, what I learned was something that, you know, even I, too, started to question this whole living single thing and why there's such a rash of us and there's such a rash of us that even if we accidentally do that thing, like Khadijah and her uh, childhood friend uh, in that episode I almost did. Um, and then I thought about it and I said, you know, that show would have been totally different and it would have never went to, I mean, the extra two years that it went had she right then stuck to that whole thing. And by the time that the two years is over, the dude would have had more access to all the things that they want. Oh, they got, you know, firsthand knowledge from the whole entertainment thing because that's where her man's at. And she gets to travel with her man while she has this, 
magazine and this, that, and the other, and they could live happily ever after and then some. Maybe even their girls could have actually had a chance to be able to do that too. I mean, sometimes, you know, these packs of women, even their support groups actually stay single just because they, you know, are in a pack and it's almost like they're, they're, they're going to, you know, damn, man, once, you know, once, once I get a man, you know, we're, we're, we're out of the he-man woman haters club or something like that. And well, that's some of it too. And I think the biggest problem here is that we have too many single women that, that actually overpopulate us that are unable to be able to accept us actually saying, well, you guys are not really understanding how this whole dynamic works anyway. It's not about money. It's not about success. It's about partnership, friendship, and commitment. Now, when you use that word commitment, um, the reason why men usually get really upset or kind of weirded out about um, women pulling a C word on them is because when women think about commitment, they think about don't fuck nobody else but me. You know, love me and only me. You know, no matter what, and this, that, and the other. And that's fine, that's fine. That's a really good answer, but it's a short-term answer. Now, here's the longer version of that. Commitment is like um, accidentally falling in love and having this heat-of-the-moment thing. You're 16 and she's 17, and y'all go off and y'all run off and elope and get married. And 45 years later, 45 years later, you guys are sitting there in your 50s and 60s together in a commitment, sitting back and going, you know, we could do anything you want. Now, see, here's the funny thing about it. Once you get a commitment, once you make a partnership, there is absolutely nothing within the confounds of your spirituality or in relationship stability that can prevent either one of you or both of you from not really honestly exploring and enjoying the whole basket, the whole bounty, the whole fullest of life. Matter of fact, you actually get to hang out with somebody in the process of it, but it's like having that best friend or this, that, and the other. But, you know, um, your success ratio is shorter than, you know, your survival rate. And so you got to be a glutton for punishment and you, you got to make all these decisions and you're not going to be um, totally sure once you decide to all of a sudden make some kind of a lifetime decision. But you got to be something that a lot of people aren't right now. And that's true to their word at that moment and their faith. Two big things. Staying true to yourself, keeping it real. I might make a bad decision that I think is a bad decision today and make that decision, and that decision turns out to be the best thing that happened to me in my life. And I honored that decision not because it might be a bad position coming soon or anything, but because, gosh darn it, I got to stick to my word. I got to stick to what it is that I'm doing. I might not like you today. We might not like each other tomorrow. It might take us three, four months out of a year to actually like each other, but each year that that adds up is commitment. Now, in the process of all of that, a lot of people don't like that because men are spoiled and women are spoiled. But women give ultimatums. If you don't do this, then I'm going to go find somebody who is. That, in man talk, is a deal breaker. Because that's what, what, what men hear, when women give men an ultimatum, is you ain't singing no Jennifer Holiday. And I'm telling you, I'm not going, even if you take your ass down the street and find out three months later that that bitch was crazy when I told you that she was crazy three months earlier. I'm going to be there. And yes, I'm going to talk about you. But, hmm, I'm not going. That's commitment. Come on, man. That's what it's all about, isn't it?